Jim Harbaugh NFL Watch continues here on Thursday. I am James Yoder. Let's get into today's Michigan football report. Take a look at what is happening around the situation. Plus, I'm going to answer some of your questions from Michigan fans. And, hey, shout out to the new Chargers audience. and had a bunch of Chargers fans in the comments yesterday. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. First thing to talk about, Jim Harbaugh interviewed with the Falcons on Tuesday. But now it's been reported here in the last hour or so that Bill Belichick will have his second interview uh, this weekend with the Falcons. So in my opinion, if that's leaked before Harbaugh will get a second interview, kind of makes me think that uh, Belichick has got uh, the Falcons in his uh, sight lines. Arthur Blank, their, uh, the owner of the Falcons, met with Belichick one-on-one. Our Falcons guy, Matthew Peterson, today said he thinks it's a done deal. It's going to happen this weekend. He's going to kind of meet with the entire Falcons front office. So it leads me back to, uh, I think Jim Harbaugh is taking whoever's call is you know reaching out to him at this point, but he's got his eye on the team potentially with the best young quarterback that he could build on in a city that's got uh, young talent city that he wants to live in and can be his next stop at, uh, as an NFL head coach. Guys, Jim Harbaugh might leave this program. We won't leave here, this show. We're not going to turn to a Chargers show by any means, although I think I am now the new char- leading Chargers insider. The, uh, every Chargers fan on Twitter followed me yesterday for some reason. I got 240 new followers yesterday. All of them Chargers fans for the most part. Uh, I think it's every Chargers fan in America. But if you're a Michigan fan, uh, spam the comments to go blue. Make sure that uh, we're, we're kind of, you know, drowning out all of these Chargers fans and haters in the comments. All right, you guys see me wearing a coat here. Want to keep this in there before we get into the Harbaugh stuff, etc. I lost a bet, so don't blame me here. I had confidence in a Harbaugh quarterback, Joe Flacco, right? John Harbaugh quarterback, won a Super Bowl with John Harbaugh, beat Jim Harbaugh, if you remember, in that Super Bowl in 2012, that he, for the Browns, would be my arch nemesis, the guy that we own as the Michigan football program in this show, uh, Coleridge C.J. Stroud with the Texans. So the bet was the loser of that game, um, you know, that quarterback battle in reality between me and Jeremy Chuggs, one of our producers you guys might know from a couple years ago, had to wear the T-shirt of choice of the other guy who got won. So uh, just bear with me on this one. I'm going to have to uh, wear this today, and I'm not happy about it at all. It's a uh, I don't know, Houston Texans, it says, yeah, yeah, I don't know I don't know the reference. I'm not a Texans fan by any means. I'm not a tech, anti-Texans fan. So I'm going to tell you what, Stroud, I know you're watching this, Coldridge. You're never going to get one of these. Or you're never going to get a national championship jacket like I was wearing. So, uh, you know, all things are good. I think the Harbaugh, uh, Mike McDonald, right? Mike McDonald and Harbaugh, Jim, got it done in 2021 against Coldridge Stroud. And it's going to be 20 degrees in Baltimore. So just think about that. Uh, I think it's that game Saturday, right, Jack? Saturday for that one. Uh, Coldridge Stroud. 20 degree weather against Mike McDonald and a Harbaugh coach team. Game over, but they must crush him this weekend. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't go another week with uh, Stroud continuing to have success in the NFL. But because Jeremy made us do this, he maybe wear the Stroud shirt. He could wear, maybe wear anything he wanted. Uh, it's a big shirt. Jeremy's a big boy. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's flash mob time. We are going to make him pay. You guys remember he was the producer of the show before Jack. Went to Vegas with me after the 2021 game. All that good stuff, but he's completely turned. He's now a Stroud stand. He's one of the leaders of the Stroud boys. Um, let's make sure don't forget uh, that uh, Michigan football dominates Coldridge Stroud. His Twitter account is at Jeremy Chugs. The link to it is down in the comments. It's down uh, kind of at the top part of the description there in this video. Either go to it, search for it on Twitter right now, or just click the link down in the comments or description. Go there and just tweet at him. Go blue. Let's get like 50 people to do it so he knows that he messed with the wrong show, Michigan Football Report. Let's get into some questions here on Jim Harbaugh, future of the Michigan football program. And I like this one from our guy, Brad G. Uh, is at BradGoBlue85 on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, at James Jarrett. Um, when Harbaugh said after interviews for the, interviewing for the Vikings job that he would not uh, you know, be a yearly thing, he took him, Brad took him for his word, which I think a lot of people did. He says, why do you think he didn't follow through? Um... He said that he'll have be at Michigan as long as they will have him. Well, I'll say it like this. Um, in my opinion with Jim Harbaugh, he has a way of m- twisting words, maybe even in his own mind, to bend reality. So an example, um, you, you married me, sweetheart. You said you'd never cheat on me. And it says, with the information I had at that time, I wouldn't. But when, uh, I don't know, pick a uh, celebrity girl, when Supermodel X decided to hit on me at the bar, I, how could I have foreseen that information when I made that vow? When I made the vow to, the, to Michigan. How could I have foreseen that we'd won the national title two years later and the Chargers would have offered me the job? You, you can never predict the future. So uh, yeah, Yahoo Sports' Dan Wetzel put out this on Harbaugh yesterday. He's uh, seeking a matrix of fines. Right? Jim Harbaugh is basically right now trying to make sure that um, he can still look for an NFL job 
but also not be at the whims of Michigan's athletic director, Ward Manier, or anybody at the University of Michigan, should something come out in the future. Let's just say in the future um, it shows that Jim Harbaugh was added on a Dropbox folder that uh, Connor Stallions had some of these uh, sign-stealing videos in or something like that. Whether Harbaugh never you know, accessed it or not, Michigan could, maybe if they went 9-4 and four in a couple of years, Michigan could say, well... That's for cause. So we're going to fire you. Void the $70 million of your contract. It's kind of the Mel Tucker rule. Coaches are very cognizant. They want to be like Jimbo Fisher, fully guaranteed no matter what. He probably had a, a clause rule in there. But Harbaugh doesn't want this to come back on him. As long as he's telling the truth right now, I don't blame him at this point. So um, I think I'm a, little, um, I'm a little disappointed in Jim Harbaugh from the fact that he did say this won't be an annual thing. And then a year later, he's talking to the Broncos. He's reaching out to the Panthers. And then a year later, Michigan wins the national championship. He's interviewing two days after the parade. He's interviewing with the Chargers. A day after that, with the Falcons. And hell, he probably is having conversations with other teams back channel as we speak. So a um, little disappointing, but he delivered a national title. And as long as I said, tweet this out last night, I hope the next time we see Jim Harbaugh, it's not putting on a Chargers hat and walking up to the podium and accepting that job. I hope that he, as a Michigan player, a son's a, a assistant coach's son, a quarterback, Heisman Trophy finalist in Michigan, head coach for nine years, I hope if he decides to accept that job, let's say he accepts it Friday, they're going to have a press conference on Saturday or Sunday. Have a press conference in Michigan the day before, even if it's at 10 o'clock at night, come back, thank Michigan fans, Tell Michigan fans you're always going to be a Wolverine, that you've got this new challenge you want to go at. You're leaving the program in the uh, the hands of Sharon Moore, maybe even Jesse Minter, although I think it'll be Sharon Moore. That's when I want to see Jim Harbaugh next if he goes to the NFL. It would really hurt me if he just disappears in the middle of the night like Elaine Kiffin did at Tennessee, and uh, you never hear from him again uh, related to the Michigan football program. Another question comes from, hey, it's Adam. Who do you think the top can is for the head coaching job right now? I assume it's Sharon Moore. Uh, which could work for one season. But what about options like P.J. Fleck or Brian Kelly? Eh, I don't know about P.J. Fleck. Brian Kelly, I don't know. I mean, he didn't have the highest amount of success at Notre Dame. They made the playoffs twice. We're never really comp- – I guess made the playoffs twice and we were in one national title game pre-playoff. But they're not competitive in any of those games. Where Michigan uh, was uncompetitive against Georgia, was right there against TCU, should have won that game, crazy things happened, and then you know won two playoff games this year. I think it's Sharon Moore, though. All right? In the grand scheme of things – he was the guy that probably would have got the job a year ago. He's the guy that Jim Harbaugh has kind of been boasting all day, all, all this time. And if you look back to when Michigan's entire fortune changed, he was there in 2021. He switched uh, from tight ends coach to offensive line coach. A year later, a you know, uh, co-OC with Josh Gaddis, or it was the same year in 2021, a co-OC in 2022 with Matt Weiss, I should say, and then full OC, O-line coach in 2023. So he was there in the bad times into the good times. And I think you got to kind of have that, that you know, mentality. Long term, we might find out that Jesse Minter turns out to be a better coach, coordinator, and head coach in the future. But as of right now, I think how things are going to shake out, that Michigan has pretty much, uh, you know, signaled that Sherman Moore is going to be the next guy for the job at Michigan. And I think that he would be named head coach within 24 hours of Jim Harbaugh officially accepting an NFL job. Derek W. coming in. Where is this one coming from? YouTube, right here on YouTube. Is Michigan currently targeting a transfer portal QB, or are we going to stick to our current allotment of quarterbacks like Alex Orgy, Jaden Davis, um, Jaden Denegal, Warren, Davis Warren, and others? So he's coming back in 2024, right? Here are the guys that are on the rosters as of now. Jaden Davis coming in, the true freshman. He was out there for bowl practice. Jack and I tried to trace him down. We couldn't find him at media day for the college football playoff national championship game two days prior. We're going to make sure he knew about our $100,000 offer, uh, minimum offer, to do a YouTube show. Nevertheless, Davis Warren, I think we've seen the limitations of him over the last couple of years. Alex Orgy, he's the one that I think people think is the leader in the pack. Uh, although we haven't seen him throw the ball a ton, uh, people who have been in practice say Jaden Denegal is a, the best passer maybe out of all those guys short of Jaden Davis. I'm not sure if there's transfer reporter guys out there right now. Uh, I don't think Will, it's not Will Howard, uh, Will Rogers from Mississippi State, matches what Michigan's going to do under Jim Harbaugh or Sharon Moore. And all the other big-time quarterbacks, for the most part, have been taken. So there will be some spring football battles that the loser might be looking for another job. And if that player is you know, right there, they get a good recommendation from their head coach, they were a top recruit that maybe Michigan recruited for a while in high school, you could see that happen in the April uh, into May transfer portal window. But as of right now, I would guess it's either going to be Orgy or Denegal getting the nod at the beginning of the season, and they're going to work Jaden Davis in like they did J.J. McCarthy. If 
Davis has success. I would not be surprised, not predicting by any means, but wouldn't be surprised that by the end of this 2024 season that Jaden Davis is a true freshman is Michigan's starting quarterback. Let me know what you guys think. Where will Michigan's quarterback in this 2024 season, where will he come from? Will he be Michigan made, like one of the four or five guys we just showed you? Or will it be a transfer portal quarterback? Give me an M or a T down in the comments. And while you're down there commenting, I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. It's so fun to play Prize Picks because it's easy, it's fast, and you can win up to 25 times your money this week on Prize Picks. I have got some picks for you. I am going with Josh Allen. I'm going more, up to 237.5 passing yards for him against the Chiefs at home. Dalton Schultz, he's going to catch passes from Coldridge Stroud. They're going to be down, I think, so they're going to do a lot of passing, more than 36.5 receiving yards. And then I'm going less for Aaron Jones against that vaunted 49ers defense, less than 73.5 yards. That's just how simple it is, right? You pick two to six players, and you just say more or less, right? You can, you can mix and match sports as well. You can go a little NFL to NFL, to NBA, anything like that. I've been putting prize picks in all season long, Thursday Night Football, college football games, NFL Sunday, the playoffs, Monday Night Football. You will love it. And it continues on through NBA, um, Major League Baseball season, into next football season. Get up to a $100 deposit match, first deposit match with prize picks if you use the link in the comments and description, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Our Alabama show had more of their users sign up and make their first deposit last week after the loss to Michigan than we did. So, uh, you know, this is the time to show our sponsors that the Michigan Football Report uh, audience comes through, has fun, supports our sponsors. Use the promo code CLNS. Use that link as well. Get the website, get the app, make your first deposit up to a $100 deposit match. Keep it rolling here on the Michigan Football Report. We've got first name, a lot of numbers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Uh, I can't even read that. What does it say? Mer make America think critically again. Who can argue with that? How do we place four or five starting offensive linemen? Um, Miles Sands coming back, but six of the top seven offensive linemen, really the top six offensive linemen, are all headed to the draft. So Michigan could potentially uh, be the first team ever to have six offensive linemen drafted in one NFL draft. Zach Zinter, Trevor Keegan. Drake Nugent, Ladarius Henderson, Carson Barnhart, and Trent A. Jones. So I would assume that uh, Miles Hinton will get one of those starting nods. I'm actually leaning towards uh, you know, Greg Crippen and some others to uh, be starters as well. Here's the guys coming back in the two deep, right? Uh, Giovanni Al-Hadi, Greg Crippen, Raheem Anderson. Uh, they're two guys playing center now. There's a chance to put the best five. We all know Carson Barnhart was probably better as a guard for Zach Sinter and Trevor Keegan. He had to kick out to tackle for almost the entire year. You could make an argument that Michigan didn't have their best five on the field the last two games of the year, but had the best five at their positions with Zinter out, Keegan there. And that's the bad part about Zinter. He was clearly a better player than Trevor Keegan, but getting a player like Trent A. Jones at right tackle instead of Keegan, you know, that Michigan maybe ultimately worked itself out. I think they were trying to get their best five on the field. Uh, and, and with Zinter and, and Keegan there, you really didn't have a place to put um, Carson Barnhart. So it is what it is. There are some other offensive tackle candidates. Jeffrey Percy, I think he's going to uh, be in the mix for a starting job. Connor Jones, Tristan Bounds. Another one that will definitely be in the two do deep is Bounds. Um, Evan Link is one that we'll see what comes uh, from him. Other players. Now, a couple of these guys could switch positions. If they're one of the best five, you never know. They could kick out a tackle. Andrew Gentry may be one of those. Uh, Reese Atterbury will definitely be in the mix this year. Dominic Gudis, right? He looks like he's from The Sopranos. You ever see the picture of this guy? He's got like, slick back hair. Looks like he is Tony Soprano's, uh, young Tony Soprano, basically. Uh, Nathan Efobi, and then uh, the freshman Alessandro Lorizetti. Uh, we'll see how things shake out there. Amir Herring is going to be in the mix for uh, starting center. I think that that's uh, definitely one to keep an eye out. He had a really nice spring game, so he'll be competing there with uh, Raheem Anderson, maybe some others. Uh, Josh Prebay. Coming over from Northwestern. This is one that I think, just based on past precedent for Michigan, you could probably slot him in to a starting position, whether it's at tackle, whether it's a guard, et cetera. Um, you know, guys can switch positions to make sure they're in the starting lineup. We'll see how it shakes out. But I don't think Michigan's going to have a bad offensive line this year. They've proven it. And people are really down on the offense right now. They're really saying, oh my gosh, we've only got the Don and Colson love them. Look at this time in 2021. Look forward to what you think. Michigan was replacing like four offensive linemen, right? 
You had Hassan Haskins coming back, and he was the best running back. You had this freshman, Blake Corum, that we no one knew what to expect from. Oh, Diamond Edwards is coming in, but is he going to make an impact as a true freshman? Cade McNamara is the quarterback. So there were so many questions on that 2021 offense, and they just hit it from game one, game two against Washington. It was on and popping. So I do think that Michigan, and especially with Sharon Moore there, uh, have the ability to have a serviceable offense to pair with should be one of the top five defenses in college football. Aaron Spencer coming in with the next question here on the Michigan Football Report. Now that to uh, Talia Tagovailoa is a night of six year, where are where in the portal should Michigan look for the quarterback uh, if they look at all in the quarterback? So we talked about Will Rogers a second. Um, some big stats he's put out there over his uh, seasons at Mississippi State. Not this reason was he injured a little bit this last year? I can't remember. A couple years ago under um, under Mike Leach, RIP, he had a huge season, but. I think Will Rogers would have been a better quarterback to transfer to Ohio State, right? He tried to transfer to Washington. Now we'll see. Maybe he ends up at Alabama. I'm not sure how that's going to shake out with Jalen Milrow. Um, I actually think Will Howard, who went to Ohio State, would have actually made more sense at Michigan. Kind of reminds me of Cade McNamara uh, with maybe a little bit better uh, better arm. So we'll see. I think I'm going uh, to nickname Will Howard for Ohio State this year. I'm just going to call him Cade Howard over and over until so people be like, his name is not Cade Howard because they kind of remind me of the same player. Michigan, could they decide to throw Jaden Davis into the fire as the starting quarterback as a true freshman? Look, the biggest thing mistake Jim Harbaugh made is after J.J. McCarthy, he went two full cycles without a, I think, a true elite quarterback recruit, right? Um, it, it had to be Dante Moore, right? Uh, two years separated from J.J. McCarthy, but he came in this year, sat behind J.J., and then been the starter in 2024. Now he's probably going to go to Oregon and be benched for 2024, but it seems like that's the school that he wants to be at. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Michigan Football Report. Uh, I think I think we hit it, Jack, Asher, yesterday. We had a ton of Chargers fans. I'm going to check right now. We were one away and we started filming. 31,000, et cetera, 31,003 um, subscribers. So we hit the number. So we'll probably keep it. Maybe we won't make the account private, but I'm still going to decide on Saturday. If we've got a juicy video on Jim Harbaugh, we're going to maybe make it private, so make sure you guys are subscribed. Over on our Facebook page, David Barnwell. Make sure you guys are following 70,000-plus followers on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Harbaugh Go Blue. We're going to have to change that link. It's not going to be Harbaugh Go Blue anymore. It's going to be more Go Blue. It's like more more Go Blue. So many opportunities, Jack, to like just play in that game. Like, you know, his name is Moore, right? You can just more Blue. Yeah, something like that. Um, blue Moore. Something like that. Well, what did he say, though, uh, David Marshall? He said, um, I can't read it. He plays... Who the cancer plays all that talent? Uh, he gets Edwards for quorum, but who places Zintry and Keegan? The next receiver to wear number one. Who's left on the defensive line behind Graham? Now, the defensive line is an area that Michigan has, should have no issues. You've got four guys coming back in Mason Graham, Kenneth Graham, uh, Derek Moore, Josiah Stewart, who were playing starter level snaps all this year. And there are a few um, clips of them against Alabama's offensive line and definitely against Washington's offensive line where they dominated, they, they, they held their own. And I am not worried about the defensive line at all. I think Michigan is a top two or three D line in all of college football. Linebackers, I don't have that big of a, a you know big deal there. They got uh, Ernest Hausman and the transfer from Maryland. So you got two Big Ten starters coming in in the secondary. Three of the five starters return. Keon Sab was a starter for a big part of the year. So you really only got to get one guy to step up and be a second quarterback. And offense, though, how about Samaj Morgan? Right? I'm not sure if he's gonna be number one. Maybe. I don't know. Roman Wilson's out. Maybe he can get number one. But as a true freshman, um, he showed the ability to, to catch passes downfield early on in the season. He had a deep pass from uh, J.J. McCarthy for a touchdown. And be that kind of like, you know, little, little, little shifty guy that you can catch passes out of the, the backfield, can catch screen passes, can go on reverses. Punt returns when he makes the right decision. But in his first opportunity against Iowa, he did. Went 80-plus yards, uh, tracked down at the five-yard line. But how about true freshman Jordan Marshall? Right? We've seen Diamond Edwards right, in the last few years. We've seen true freshmen be able to come out in and make uh, impact at the skill position, right? Samaj Morgan this year, right, at the wide receiver. Mike Hart said, Jordan is special, special. I mean, he's special. He's like Blake. Talk about a replacement with Blake. It's Jordan Marshall as far as who's for teammate, uh, as a person, great teammate, the way he carries himself. I think overall he can do everything just like Blake from the standpoint. He can play third down, catch the ball, et cetera, et cetera. He can do everything he needs to do to be successful. And Go watch his film, right? Just type in Jordan Marshall here on YouTube after the show. Jordan Marshall highlights. It, it kind of it looks kind of like Blake uh, Blake Corum. So they'll find a spot for him. Blake didn't have a huge impact as a true freshman, but that was the COVID season 2020. Michigan really had nothing that went right that year. 
But right out of the gate, as a true sophomore in 2021, Blake Corum exploded, and I think he ended up the best running back in the history of Michigan football. Adam Seconder says, if Harbs goes, what is the feeling on Moore being the head coach, and does he have the juice to keep Minter as the D.C.? I mean, that would be the biggest recruiting win of the year for maybe any team in the Big Ten. I'm not sure if you keep Jesse Minter. And there's something to be said, right? Minter's dad was a longtime coach in college football, and Minter's got experience, right? Vanderbilt, uh, before the Ravens, he was in college as well. Um, maybe he wants to be a head coach, right? He might think he should be the head coach at Michigan, although, you know, Tron Moore's from Moore's been there, what, five, six seasons? Minter's only been there two, but the odds are that he is going to be Jim Harbaugh's defense coordinator, I would think. Or, if not, that if Mike McDonald, Michigan's former D.C., gets a head coaching job in the NFL, which is kind of crazy how things work out, goes from position coach, the Ravens, D coordinator at Michigan, D coordinator the Ravens two years, NFL head coach in, in the span of three years, then I think Mitchell goes to be the Ravens defensive coordinator. Um, but you never know what people are thinking. You might have a situation where Moore can say, stick with me for one more year, man. We're going to put out one of the best defenses in the country. You're going to prove to everybody that it wasn't just Jim Harbaugh. It wasn't just the Ravens system. It was you. And that'll put up your stock instead of going to be a DC in the NFL. Maybe you can go to be a head coach at, I don't know, another school, Nebraska or something like that, a big time Power Five school, if that's what he wants. But if he wants to go to the NFL, there are going to be jobs for him. Hell, and the Eagles are going to be all over him in a matter of days as well. Let me know what you guys think. Will he be Michigan's defensive coordinator in 2024? Very simple. Just go down in the comments and give me a yes or a no. Corey Kohler. And this is the guy that people just, I've seen more hate towards. Ward Manual that I've ever seen. For if you think about it, in his tenure, what seven years or so right now, you've had a lot of success as AD. But where people are concerned and worried and not really feeling it is the lack of NIL, like you know, growth or aggressiveness, and the fact that he's lost a lot of coaches. If he loses Jim Harbaugh, you've basically lost your best coach in program history in football, in basketball, in baseball, and in hockey in a matter of like. Four or five years. So here's what we got right now, right? So coaches Ward Manuel's lost, right? You could add Jim Harbaugh to the top of this list if he leaves. John Beeline, two national championship games, right? And a year and two months removed, you lost him to the Cavs. He got fired after 40 games. Um, the Cavs kind of remind me of like the Chargers of the NFL, although I like the Cavs. I'm from Ohio. Um, you know, without LeBron, they're the Chargers of the of the NBA, I should say. Eric Patrick, right, took Michigan to the deciding game, winner take all of the college of the college World Series, right? He left to Clemson. Red Berenson retired. Okay, we understand that one, but his replacement, Mel Pearson, had Michigan in the Frozen Four, and that offseason was fired for off the field issues that I personally didn't think merited being fired. But I think some athletic directors are spineless when it comes to things like, oh, someone claimed he harassed them. Well, it was their proof. I'm not sure, or you know, the entire absurdity that was you know testing for COVID of 19 and 20 year old perfectly fine-tuned athletes that uh, is what it is so if that's your resume athlete that as the athletic director that's kind of brutal and I think long term even though you've had success you've got a national championship at football that should write your ticket as an AD forever but because you've lost all these coaches didn't have a contract in front of Jim Harbaugh a year ago months ago etc right at the parade you're still talking we're trying to get you a contract why wasn't it in his hand to sign already that blows my mind. He could be the Jerry Krause, if you don't know the reference, the general manager of the Bulls in the 90s that just decided after the sixth title, time to rebuild, right? We don't want to let this thing go. We're, we're going to push Michael out. We're going to trade Scotty Pippen. We're going to get rid of Dennis Rodman. And the Bulls for 25, six years after that have been one of the worst five, six, ten franchises in the NBA. Had a little blip of success 2009, right, 10, 11, 12 with Derrick Rose once he got hurt back down to a bottom feeder of uh, the, the NBA. And really sad, I think Krause is dead. They were having like a, you know, Bulls Ring of Honor ceremony over the weekend. His widow, his wife in like a wheelchair was accepting it. They put his picture on the big screen. She's sitting there in a wheelchair, like 85 years old. The entire arena starts booing her. Bad idea. He shouldn't have put his picture up there because you just see his picture. They don't see her down there booing. She starts bawling her eyes out. Hope it doesn't happen for Ward Manuel's wife in the future. That's just sad, uh, you know. Uh, crazy Bulls fans, a couple beers too deep, just you know, booing uh, a dead guy when his widow, trying to you know, accept, you know, keep his legacy on, is there in the uh, in the crowd. But great Ward Manuel's uh, tenure as Michigan's AD. If Jim Harbaugh leaves, I think it's a D. If he stays, I think it's an A minus because he won a national championship. Went to like he's accomplished what you want to AD to accomplish in a four or five year period. 
You've got a national championship game in college basketball. You've got a deciding game, you know, the, the championship game, best of three in the college uh, baseball World Series. And you've got multiple Frozen Fours, but uh, most recently, I think, it was 2022, 2021. Uh, Michigan in the Frozen Four was 2022. And both those coaches, you know, uh, Red Berenson and then Mel Pearson out. Jim Harbaugh, national championship coach, would be out as well. If that's the case, I think you're like a D, D minus. Uh, but if Harbaugh stays, maybe you're up to a B because the success is bad success when it comes to keeping your most successful leaders of the athletic department. Make sure you guys are subscribed, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. We'll be all over the Harbaugh stuff if he leaves. Uh, we'll try and do a live show, or uh, I'll have, depending on when it is over the weekend, a coach a basketball team, my son, all that stuff. But till then, go blue.